we go. Thank you, Scale, for giving me slides. Hi. Um, thanks for coming to my uh, group therapy session. I was, uh, I saw the schedule and there's no talks after me, so I think I have the room for four hours. I'll try not to go over. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Justin. I uh, work at Disney Animation. I'm not an artist. Uh, what I am is a uh, a tool hoarder. Uh, kind of just collect these things and keep them around and try them out and have some issues. Um, <laughs> so let's kind of go over some of that stuff. If uh, the, the, the talk is inspired by uh, Brian Lenduk has a Linux talk. If you haven't seen that, I recommend going to see it. He actually gave an update to it last night. Um, so yeah, let's <laughs> let's go ahead and just figure this out as we go. My mind goes completely blank. Everything I practice goes so fast. Let me start my time. Um, so one disclaimer before we get started. Uh, I'm going to read this because the video, both people that are going to watch this on YouTube might not be able to see the slides. So let's just go ahead and go through this together. The thoughts and opinions expressed in this presentation are not my own. They are the collective outcry of every user who have ever used one of these tools and ran into one of the following limitations. While there are many ways to manage configs, this presentation will only focus on a subset of tools that are advertised, advertised as a way to make your management of configs easier in some way. You can see them in the back table. This presentation cannot address every issue in every, somewhere I lost my place, in every environment, but will attempt to make it more, uh, I'll make it limitations more obvious. This presentation should not deter you from using a config management tool. In general, they are awesome, I mean. You would be a fool to manage infrastructure of any size without one. If you care for your life, your job, your loved ones, or present, preventing Skynet, please do not write your own. There is one caveat to writing your own. If you are going to write your own tool, please make it have a better theme than the current tool. If I'm called a puppet master one more time, I might cry. One more disclaimer. I have not used every, t every version of every tool in every size environment, nor have I spoken to every user of every tool. Spoken to a lot. Uh, if, a, if I claim limitation does not affect you or cause you to cry in your pillow at night, please let me know on Google Plus so your comments can be ignored. The claims in this presentation are strictly for educational purposes and should be used as such. If I miss a limitation that you find particularly egregious, please let me know on Twitter and I won't ignore your comments. At Rothgar, the first step to fix the problems outlined in this presentation is to acknowledge they exist. The second step is to storm the respective GitHub issues and let the maintainers know what limitations to prioritize. The third step is to pay those companies so they will listen to your outcry and assign someone to ignore your request. The final step is to not, I repeat, do not ignore the issues and move everything to Docker in a config management free utopia where you will incorrectly assume no issues will ever come up again. Now that that's out of the way. Let's just look broadly at you know, everything kind of sucks a little bit, and they all kind of have some of the similarities together. One of those similarities I'm very sorry about, but I cannot help you with. Um, that's more of a it's you, it's not, you know, it's not me, it's you. Um, but a lot of these tools, just if, I'm sorry if you're in Windows environment, because um, they all kind of suck there. Um, second place is documentation. They always, there's a, you always want some example of something and you're not going to find it in documentation because there's either whole sections of tools that aren't documented or, you know, you have a weird environment or, you know, something you need is not going to be there. And, and that's okay. Documentation sucks everywhere. Some a little more than others, but, you know, it, it all kind of sucks. Testing is hard. Uh, Carlos gave a talk earlier about test-driven infrastructure and, and it just explains, like, testing this stuff is hard. Like, if you need to know what's going to be, you know, you make a change here and, like, a server in Oregon or something's going to do something. Like, what is that actually going to happen? You know, what's going to happen? Is the network the same as your, your local environment? Probably not. Um, so you're either maintaining duplicate infrastructure or you have crazy vagrant boxes that try to replicate everything. And it's just, it's hard. It's not going to happen, you know, right away. And, and there's, there's just a lot to do there. Templating. Everyone loves some ERB and Jinja too, right? <laughs> They're great. <laughs> I see you crying. Yes, all right. <laughs> We're all here together. 
uh, and there's and there, why isn't there like a way? I mean, I know there are some tools that kind of do this, but like I have a template and like I want to do an Ansible run and like spit out the template and like just show me what that template was here and like not like there's a no op, but then it's gonna like try to put it there. Like I just want to like here's my template file, here's my you know server I want it to run on. Someone figure out the environment variables and then make that template for me, right? It, it should be easy, but sometimes it's just not. And then in those templates, like you have secrets to put, right? Like like that's what templates are for. Like you need to put things in those files, and and, and you only tell your, your friends your secrets. Like why would you tell some strangers? And like Eemul's not your friend. Like this stuff is hard. Like like every config management tool, like the answer is like, oh well, we have these passwords. We gotta put them somewhere, right? Let's rub a little crypto on them. Like we're good. We'll stick that in a text file, and no one can read it, right? And it's true because like I can't read that. What does that What does that say? Like that's a that's I gave it my password and it lied to me. It told me this was my password. I'm like, no, that's not what I said, right? I, I don't know. Like, can you read that? But then, like, someone made another commit and, like, that's the pass. Like, that's the new password. Oh, cool. Like, well, I, I don't know which one's which. Like, okay, well, let's let me go to the box and like find out what it is or some decrypt it somehow. And, like, one of these is is password, and the other one is is you know dev random. Like, can you read it? Like, I'll give you the pem file. Can you, you tell me what it is? And, like, spoiler. Like, that one's passed. Let's let's. So you decide you're you're gonna go, you're gonna do this. You know they all suck a little bit, but like let's just start. Let's go with it. Like, let's pick a tool, and you know, Puppet spends a lot of marketing dollars, so they must be good, right? They're really mature, and man, my Twitter stream has their ads like every fifth tweet. So I, let's let's go with it because it must be good because I see it all the time. So like, you know, let's, let's go to documentation. Like, what do I need to get this set up? Like, there, there's got to be some simple like diagram of like, okay, it's like a box or two, right? Oh well, kinda like it was a little more than I expected. I mean, this is large scale. Like, this is you know seven thousand nodes. Like, yeah, like I know people in this room that have that. Like, I do, <laughs> and and that's kind of a lot to manage for this. And I don't like the lines. Sometimes I'm colorblind, so like thanks, like but no thanks. And and like who's gonna set all this up? And like what's managing this? Like how did I get that there? Like I need config management to put that in place. And it's like but ah. <sighs> It's a true story, very true story. My very first Ansible playbook I wrote was deploying Puppet to all my 7,000 nodes. Like, that was what I did. And I, it's all, it was all downhill for Puppet since then. Like, it was just kind of like, hey, like, that worked, and that was cool. And, but, you know, like, let's, let's go on ahead, like, because Puppet is still mature. Like, so spell this out for me. Like, what do I need? Like, those are the, the 13 boxes I need to manage this. Like, that's... Okay, like 13, like I can do that. Amazon's cheap, right? Like I can convince management they'll do this. So it's like, you know, 30 cores. Like that's that's not terrible, you know? Like I think Raspberry Pi 3 is going to have that. So we should be okay, like a little bit down the road. Like we'll be fine. And like, oh, man, 100, 100 gigs of RAM. Like that's that's a little bit of a bullet fight. Like, okay, well, let's let's keep going. Like, you know, it's just it's like a, you know, fries hard drive. Like who cares? So yeah, like management. Yeah, they'll, they're on board for that, right? And like, we're good. But then, you know, but who has, you know, this is a new environment. This is like hipster Puppet. This is C and Haskell. Like, this is all the hotness of, you know, Puppet Server. Like, Puppet 3, anyone? Like, Puppet 2? Like, you're on Puppet Master, right? And that's, let's see, what what's those requirements there? Like, oh, that, that was a little bit worse. You know, it kind of upped it for everything. And but then there's that, that other little thing that, like, oh, yeah, Puppet Master. Like, this is only, this is only 2,000 nodes. <laughs> significantly dropped what you could just do. And so if you have, you know, let's say you have 4,000, like just double it all, right? Management's on board. Let's, let's go for it. Got our infrastructure set up, you know? So Puppet, co Puppet has Puppet code. You know, like here's lots of good things about Puppet code. Like it's a DSL. Ooh. You know, like DSL just for config management. So it's gotta be good, right? It's like JSON and Ruby, and like, like had a baby and Puppet code. So it's, it's got to be easy to write, right? So I mean, let's let's go for it because this is, you know, oh wait, sorry, <laughs> it's got to be mature because it's puppet code and it's been around forever. Like if anyone knows this bug, this has been around forever. This feature bug, whatever. Ten year old from from puppet 0 0.24. Like I need to make a directory tree. Like let me do that in puppet code. Well, kind of. Like you can kind of do it. Really, like I mean, I have. 13 boxes up, set up my server farm, and like, 
I want to run this on all of them, and I can't. Like, I can't easily. I just, I mean, this bug's 10 years old. I just imagine Luke, like, he's still, he's still up in Portland, like, typing away on his computer. He's like, oh, I gotta fix this bug. Hey, Luke, you want to come to lunch? No, no, I gotta fix this, you know? Like, okay, we'll bring you back something. Like, well, but does he know we don't use that bug tracker anymore? Like, we moved. Did you see the manor? Like, hey, we moved. Like, go somewhere else. Like, we wiped the slate clean. And All right, so let's, let's just dig into the puppet code. Like, we can, we can write this because it's easy, right? So let's, let's make our directory tree. This is super easy, right? But it's so easy to write bad puppet code. Because this, this, is, this is it, right? This is what you want. It's not, because it's bad. And why are there commas everywhere? Take those off there. Like, nothing does that. Like, why are there commas on the end? Like, I don't know. But so, like, let's, let's make this. This is a class, but let's make, like, parameterize that class. You know, this is what you need, because you're doing it wrong. So, okay, like, put parentheses around it. All right, so it has per the class has parameters. So now we're good, right? Like, no, you're still doing it wrong. Like, you need a params class that has your variables. Then you read that in, and you inherit it. So, like, okay, now we're good, because this, this is good puppet code, right? It's like, well, store your variables in Hira. Like, set that up, and you got to put it all in Hira first, and then it, that inherits. Okay, because you're still doing it wrong. But then it's like, well, we're good, right? This is puppet code. This is easy. It's like, well, it's not a role or a profile. Like, <laughs> rebuild that and put it as a role and profile. I mean, come on. Like, this, is, this isn't hard, right? And put, rub a little R10K on there, and, and you're set. <laughs> I don't know. And really, this is what ends up in my puppet code. That's, like, that's it. Like, all of that, and I'm like, all right, screw it, just, just go. Like, I'm, I'm in. And then you got to figure out, like, I need that directory there first, right? Puppet figures it out for you. You know, they compile it. It's all, doesn't go in order that you wrote it. No, it, they, they, do it, they do it right, right? So you have to, like, use one of these keywords, you know? With, I always look them up, like, sub subscribe, goes back, no. You notify something, and then, well, let, okay, let's, 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 let's take a step back. Like, let's put classes together. So the classes will go in order, right? And you got these little things. Like, well, the, the squiggly is subscribe, because that starts with an S, right? And then, like, reverse is uh, unsubscribe. Then you don't get email. I don't think that's right. But then, like, let's, you know, I need all my directories there before I put files down. And, like, this is the example I get for, like, I'm like, what is that? I don't I don't know what pipes, why did you put those in there? Like, I, I don't know. And so, but for the puppet people, like, I have a, like, puppet 5.0. Like, I know syntax is going to change because it changes every time. So here's my feature request, all right? Like, new, new syntax for before. Like, here's, here's before, all right? We're good? <laughs> is after? We're, we still good? Follow me? All right? Then there's, there's, like, I don't care, puppet, you decide. Like, just, you can do whatever you want. And then, like, you know what you did. That's, that, that, those are going all over my, my puppet code now. Like, that's, that's what I want next. There's got to be good parts, right? I mean, puppets, like, they have, like, good parts. Right? NCO. That's, you guys aren't laughing. That's the punchline. <laughs> I'll narrow it down a little bit. So, like, we have MCO, like, kind of broadcast stuff to everything, and you can talk to everything at once, right? So that's cool. What's the best plugin for it, right? You know, ping. Well, I kind of had that. I kind of had a tool that did ping. I could ping lots of things at once. So, then, like, you know, I could run Puppet. I'm like, oh, well, they already told me to start the Puppet service. So, like, Puppet's running, right? Oh, no one runs the Puppet service. <laughs> Don't be silly. <laughs> so, you got to have a service plugin to disable the Puppet service, right? And then you can go back and you can run Puppet with that. So, you're, you're okay. But then, like, anything else you need to do, like, I need to check something else in my infrastructure, like, RPC, like, that's, that's your answer. Like, just give me a shell on all the boxes at once, and we're good, because it's just going to broadcast everywhere. And it's like, but you know what? You know what I really like? I think that's kind of like this. <laughs> Speaking of SSH and a loop, I mean... <laughs> so, I mean, Ans Ansible, right? Like, like... That's what it does, right? It's, it, I mean, Luke has said in the past, like, it's not a solution. But you know who's a really smart guy? Michael DeHaan's a really smart guy. He's like, you know what? Like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a little bit different because I'm just going to use Python and Paramico's not SSH, right? Let's kind of abstract that a little bit. And 
now he's Michael Smart, so he must figure this out. Like, he used to work at Red Hat, and then he went to work at Puppet, and then he started Ansible, and then he saw the writing on the wall, and he got out of there before Red Hat bought him again. He didn't want to go back. <laughs> but let's, you know, so so let's let's take a look. What do we got here? What? Tools exist that did this. I mean, we could get SSH on a bunch of boxes. There's there's a bunch of tools that do it. I could call up any of these, give it a list of servers, and I have SSH on all of them. And there's more. I mean, it just keeps going. Like every every other week, it's like, oh, it's another parallel SSH thing. That's cool. But you know, Ansible gives us a couple different things, right? It gives us abstraction, and and it gives us you know, uh, so slow. It gives us CalSe. I mean, none of those other tools gave me CalSe, and that's good. And the very there's two things that everyone does when they run run uh, Ansible for the first time. There's one is they turn on infinite scroll back in their shell because CalSe is just taking up like 40 lines of shell, and you're like, oh, where'd that go? That sucks. <laughs> and the second thing is is they're uninstalling CalSe. <laughs> It's like, oh, I didn't actually want that. It was cute, but, man. But then, I mean, Ansible is really close to just a straight shell. I mean, there's there's not a lot of abstraction there. And so, I mean, let's go through an example here. We're going to see. Let's let's install a package. Let's install some software. So, like, Chef and, and Puppet, like, hey, that's cool. Like, package. That's, that makes sense to me, right? And Salt's like, huh. I see what they did there, you know, because sysadmins are lazy. It's like, hey, you know what? I got an idea. But then it's like, okay, Ansible, like you can do this too, right? Oh shoot! What was that? What, what's the web box again? Do I use do I use app? I don't. I don't remember. Let's, let's look at it. Okay. Well, okay. Or anyone gives me comments? Like yes, Ansible 2.0 has a package module. Cool. I have no idea if it which ones it includes or how it works. Just saying. So like, this is my new. This is my 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 playbook for Ansible because it's like I need to do stuff, so I have common. I'm gonna put some stuff on there. It can recursively make directories. Uh, Web's gonna install Apache, right? But oh well, is it HTTPD? Uh -huh. Is it Apache 2? I don't know. I can't just like put a variable there because the modules are different, right? So then what do you gotta do? You gotta like do this abstraction. So you have all these like if branching of like well, Fedora uses Yum, right? And, and Ubuntu's apps, and then it's like, well, but, like, which version of Fedora is that? Is that 23? Cause it's DNS. So you use another module. So you have another branch down there. It's just branches all the way down. You know, I just want a little more abstraction in there. So it's, it's a little less than just a straight shell. A little bit more. And then you're, you're troubleshooting this. I don't know why, for some reason, for me, Ansible seems hard with this. I don't, I don't get it. Because you have to register. You're like, run something, register a variable out of it, and then I need to like do something with that. But I never know what I actually need out of that variable. So I'm like, I just have, you know, register a variable and then, like, debug a bunch of times. I just go through my shell. I'm like, uh, I think this is the one I need. And I end up just, like, using the whole JSON output in var and, and then, like, repping that because I, I have no clue which one I actually needed to do something on. But then you want to use that variable for something. So you have to, like, there's, there's Ansible uses Jinja, and it's, like, directly in the, in the playbook. Uh, but it's, like, kind of Jinja sometimes. But sometimes it's, it's more of a... Like, well, that's not really, like, enclosed in Jinja bracket. So, I, like, is that Jinja? It just, like, piped it to skip? Like, but what does that actually mean? Is that the variable was skipped? No, that was the, the task was skipped. And so you have to make sure you kind of get that in your head. But then it's like, well, let me cast, like, that variable. My output was one, but that's actually a string. So I always got to cast it to an int and then test if it was, you know, the right thing. And, and sometimes that's just, you know, it, is it Jinja? Is it not? Is it is it YAML? And, and if the YAML starts breaking down, you probably should get something a little more specific in the language, like public code, I don't know. Um, and then you get stuff like this, where it's like, oh, I need to do this thing and put this file in place. And, and this is a lovely example from their documentation on, on getting some escape thread there. But I don't think that's better. And then Ansible just sometimes. I mean, when you're really, if, if you have a few boxes, cool, get going, and, and you're up and running, and right, there's no agents, right? SSH is kind of an agent. But what's up with five forks? Like, five servers at a time. I mean, if I have, let's say I have a thousand. Oh my gosh, like that's gonna take forever. And uh, yes, let's let's change it a little bit. But like, no one starts at this low of a bar and then like just jumps all the way. And then they added things like accelerated mode. And it's like, oh, accelerated mode, that's faster. It's like, well, sort of. But it's not unless you unless you got EL6. Everyone has EL6. But then I, I'm really sad when they came out with accelerated mode, and then like fireball mode was gone. 
like Fireball Mode was awesome just because the name Fireball, like that's cool. Like I'm gonna run all this in Fireball Mode because that's just better. And like okay, so Ansible three, like I have a name suggestion. Let's bring back. You know, maybe we can't use Fireball because I might confuse people. But Hadouken is a really good name. Like we can just go like Hadouken Mode, and and it's faster, and and I I think that would work pretty good. Um, and then there's you know there's other things you got to turn on to like get things to work better, and it's like, as soon as I get to 100 servers, managing SSH config for 100 boxes is not, it's just not designed to do that. Like, I can't import, like, an SSHD folder of, like, every, you know, every server, and, and it gets really confusing of, of, you know, which box is which, so how do I connect each one, and then you might have different keys for different people, and it gets to be kind of a mess managing all that SSH. It's good one-on-one, -on -one, but, yeah. And so, you know, salt yeah, so it's easier to write, right? It, there's no SSH, well, sort of. Um, but, you know, they, they must have solved these problems, right? So, like, how do they solve those, like, complex YAML stuff, right? It's, they got YAML. Like, well, like, they do similar things to, to Ansible, but they, like, inherently say, like, no, 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 that's Jinja 2 and then, then YAML, so we're going to filter that into render one thing and then render another thing and then make it a thing. Uh, but then it's like, well, you can solve that because you can just write Python. And Python, you can just write Python right in there, and that's great because... You don't have to worry about all that YAML and CS, and you just keep going. It's like, but then there's like multiple Pythons. It's like, well, which one did I want? It's like, well, write everything in the first one. When you realize it's wrong, write everything in the next one, and just like, you know, keep going from there. Like maybe, maybe I'll do one of the other ones. It's like, what? Maybe not. And like they have other YAML. Like, oh, YAML X. That sounds cool. Like that's a salt YAML. Like it's like one step below Puppet Code, but like one step above uh, H. Right, don't make them big And then they have like, really obscure stuff. Like, if you have config and cheetah, like, I'm very sorry. You must be managing Windows boxes or something. <laughs> but just in case, like, if for salt, hey, if, if config management doesn't work out for you guys, I have, a, like, a pivot you could do. Like, like you could change from doing config management stuff and focus on these renders. I think you got something going on there, the way you can pipe them together. How many people wouldn't love markdown to conflict? I mean, just take take markdown files, put them right into Confluence documentation. That's great, you know. And then for anyone else, like, there's one other step: like, email, write to Excel, and then give me a, a state out of it that I can just deploy somewhere. Like, that's that is business right there. You can just render that and just like search my email anytime server A was mentioned. Like, stick it on this Excel document and give me a you know, state file. That'd be cool. <clears throat> and then they go like one step further in their documentation where it's like, oh, you know, you can you can do anything you want, like. You could write HTML or puppet files. I don't. <laughs> I want to write my puppet manifest and then have Salt put that out somewhere. And, but you know they have that as like an example, and then it doesn't exist. I was actually a little sad. <laughs> it's like they give this as a yeah, hey, you could do this, and they don't actually do that. Oh well. But you know, let's let's look at Salt a little more. And so you know, Chef's pretty mature, right? GitHub, like you know less than 400 bugs, you know, issues on GitHub, so that's pretty good. You know, and Ansible's a little less mature, and a little bit more, like, Salt's, salt's a little less mature than, than both of those, let's just say, like, I mean, a little less mature, like three, maybe. <laughs> All right, like, that's, that's, that's a lot of bugs. <laughs> the, you know, I might run into one of those bugs when I'm deploying stuff, let's just say. And then, I feel like Salt's documentation, they took all this cool documentation and then they gave it to Puppet. And they said, you order it. Like, you just do something. And, like, and they just deployed it to the, okay, that, that works. Like, no, it didn't. And then, like, this is everywhere. Like, hey, examples are in the code. Like, you mean that code with 3,200 bugs? <laughs> I'm just, let me just go read all those bugs and, like, let me triage those as I'm going and I'll set this up and we're good. And, no, like, I don't want to just read the code every time because there's bugs. So then you're like, okay, well, let's let's find some common states. Why? No, your time's wrong. All right, I'm just sorry. Anyway, uh, let's go a little further because, like, examples for states, salt, I'm sorry. A git repo is not a good place for just a bunch of states that, like, you wrote. And and Chef actually does, you know, has, has a bit, and Supermarket Puppet has a ton in the forge. Great. So let's go right to Chef. I'm sorry, Chris, I might. 
<laughs> it's delightful. <laughs> so, so like supermarket, right? It's a good place, but like, why is nothing namespace? Like, it, you have like I'm on I'm on the supermarket. I'm looking for a recipe, and I have one Apache module. Like, but you can't name it something else because like there's only one that can be Apache. Like nothing else can be called Apache. So like people name them different things, and like oh well like we have this other Apache thing. So you end up just searching GitHub again, and you hope someone wrote recipe or chef somewhere in their GitHub repo because you know that's the only way you're gonna find it to find these examples. And 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 chef does a compile thing. You know they figure out a little bit of I mean ordering in top to bottom, right? On the page you write it, that's good. Except for stuff like this doesn't work. And it's like, well, why not? It's like, well, you compiled, and when you compiled, that file didn't exist. So like, the execute never ran, because it never, it never, you know, the file, they put it there, but then it didn't run it. So like, you have to trick it, and you're like, oh, always execute this. It's like, psych, only if that's there. You're like, don't worry, like, I always want you to put that there, but then don't always run it. Just, you know, there's, there's still like these weird oddities, because like, I mean, Chef is straight Ruby, so I hope you like Ruby, because it's good. And then Chef wants you to do things with Chef, Chef Server, obviously. Uh, I can't, I gotta skip some of this stuff, because time. Um, Chef Solo, really, like, everyone just does it, because it's better. Like, these disadvantages, I'm, I'm, I'm sarcastic, these aren't necessarily disadvantages in a lot of cases, but they just, it works better with Chef Solo. And uh, writing your own um, resources and uh, providers, uh, Going a little bit here. Uh, five minutes. Oh God, I thought I had four hours. Um, so, so here's a surprise. The theme for DevOps Day right here. I'll, I'll wrap it all back up together. Like, you should still use one of these because seriously, you'd be stupid not to. Like, that is the surprise. Like, like, yes, sometimes they suck, but look at this is what you had before, isn't it? You had an Excel document with all your servers in it, and then like hardware and like. Oh hey, I changed this server, this you know, ran on this box to so, like email it out to the team and hope they all saved it. And then they edit that one. It's like no, that sucks. That was that was so bad. It's like well maybe I can just you know do something like in direct shell scripts because like I don't need all this abstraction stuff. And it's like well people sort of did like this exists like it's this waffles like config management in Bash. No, like that's. <laughs> And I mean, I usually, usually scale has a lot more kids, so I censored some of this stuff, but seriously, like, this is another one. Like, it's, it is, it's still written in Ruby, but it's just shell scripts all the way down, and I already have a folder of shell scripts. I don't need to just deploy all those everywhere. That would suck. And so, here's the real, uh, like, why you need to use these tools. Like, why is, why is this better than, like, waffles and, and doing your own thing and how you were doing it before? And seriously, like, like, meet, meet space people do not scale. Like I cannot do this on my own and like I can grow my team and then like we run out of space and like no that still didn't work because no one knows what other people is doing and it just, it just doesn't work. So you need this stuff to scale. Like if you're going to go anywhere with even 50 boxes like scale like use one of these tools. And, and seriously they're always consistent. Like the broken bits are always broken and it's great. <laughs> Because like that, you can, you can rely on it, and you can just say like, oh, I know what you're doing now, and you can work around some of those things, and that's cool because it works, and and it always works the same way until you just need major version upgrades, but um, you know, for different costs. And then it is seriously just reliable. Like when was the last time you told you know the DB admin like, hey, I need you to migrate this thing? It's like, oh, I'll get to it, you know, sometime. It's like, well, like I need it before lunch. It's like, well, like. Some things, puppet, you, you know, you have a 30-minute window. Like, you don't know when it's going to run. Like, you don't know when the DBA is going to do it. You know, like, is it this week? Like, at least with something else, you can narrow down some of that, that scope and variability, and it's, it's really reliable. And, and it just works, you know, works better if it's always consistent that way. Just manage more things. And, and then the number one thing that still, like, you should use one of these tools because you are going to be an angry sysadmin when you're old if you don't. Because this whole, this whole room of people, like, this community is the reason for these types of tools. And it is great to have people that you're not just like hacking away at this bash script in your basement because everyone's in the basement right now. Uh, but like you have, you have people that you can reach out to and it's, you know, you can work together with people on solving these issues for not just yourself, but then the next person that comes along next year, they can benefit from what you did. And that's great because that is what we all really need when we're just kind of supporting 